everyone, and welcome to my channel, A Magical Life with Ayla. I'm Ayla Hillel, and today we are going to talk about the energy of creating from a very dark place. So let's go. I recently heard this quote and it really kind of put everything in perspective for me as far as energy is concerned. And the quote went like this, the universe does not give us what we want. It gives us what we are. That just kind of hit me right in the middle of everything. The universe does not give us what we want. It gives us what we are. So the question becomes then, are you healthy? Are you wealthy? Are you loved? Are you in love? Are you those things that you want to be? It's a completely different game when you look at it from that perspective. So what I want to talk about today is, really what I want to talk about today is being human. We spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time on this channel talking about um, things, attitudes and actions and the way we behave and how to get ourselves out of those places and get our vibration up out of those places so that we can begin to create our magical life. Really, that's all this is about. That's all this channel is about, is helping you understand what you're doing, understand your vibration, and how to move that vibration, how to change that vibration, and lift that up so that you can begin to create the things in your life that you want. Because of the, the truth of the matter is, is that you're creating all the time. We are creating all the time. And this is why it's so important to raise your vibration. So <clears throat> instead of creating the things you don't want, you begin to create the things you do want. And the only way to do that is to understand your vibration and how your vibration is affecting your world. Each one of us has a little world that we live in. It's our very own little world of our own creation. But if you are constantly worried, you're going to create more of those things that you're constantly worried about. If you are continually thinking that you're going to get sick or this horrible accident is going to happen, then Maybe you don't get sick and maybe the horrible accident doesn't happen, but other negative things begin to flow into your world, into your own little reality. So whether, you, whether you're thinking good thoughts and you're creating good things or you're thinking bad thoughts and you're creating bad things in your life, we're doing it all the time. So... <clears throat> I want to talk today about illness, and I talk a lot about mental illness because that's that's a really tough one, um, <clears throat> but I really think that illness is brought on by some sort of stress. Stress makes us sick, and prolonged, it can kill us. So... What happens when 
you have a stress and it brings on an illness and the illness becomes really serious, so serious that you cannot focus on having the thoughts that you need to have to get yourself out of that place. So this then becomes this tail chasing thing where, you know, we, we, we had this stress and the stress called, caused the illness. The illness is so stressful that it causes more stress. And then you're, you're in this feedback loop. So, so what do you do then? And, you know, I always talk about, you know, having joy and having gratitude and being happy. And it's like, of course we want those things. Of course we do. And I think that we should always be reaching for those things. We should be reaching for our joy and reaching for our gratitude and reaching for our happiness. But we also live in the third dimension and stuff happens here. It just happens. And stress seems to be a big part of what goes on in the third dimensional reality. So I want to use the example of uh, I have a friend, bestest friend in the whole wide world. We've been best friends for mm, going on 28 years now. And back in October, she started having pain. And the pain came on very suddenly and got very bad very quickly. Yeah, okay, it's stress. We all know that. Um, but once you're in that place, what do you do? She went to the doctors, and this is one of my worst nightmares is when the doctors are standing around going, well, we don't know. We don't know what all the scans were clear. Thank goodness that the scans were clear. Um, but this pain remained. And so they um, considered this possibility, considered that possibility, and finally hit on a plan and uh, which was going to require uh, a little bit of surgery. And the doctor told her before they did the surgery, I'm not really sure this is going to eliminate your pain. Now, to me, this is terrifying. It's terrifying for a doctor to say, we don't know what's causing this. We're, we're kind of guessing at this point. We're kind of shooting in the dark. And... Um, we're hoping that we're going to hit upon something that makes you feel better. But we don't know if it will or not. It, I mean, that's just terrifying to me. And so um, they did the surgery and um, the some circumstances happened that the pain was still there. They figured out what the new pain, it was a new pain, and the new pain was caused by something else, and there was medication for that. And so she started taking the medication. And we were talking yesterday, and she said to me, I got to a place where I couldn't be positive. I get that. <laughs> I get that. I mean, how terrifying to be. And for those of you who have pain, you know what I'm talking about. And you're just in pain all the time. And um, I, I really understood what she meant. You know, she had reached a place where the pain, where she couldn't even hold a positive thought. And this rocked on for three or four months. And it's it's serious. This vibrationally, this is a serious matter. And I I've started I've started realizing and I and this is not an original. I don't know where this this phrase came from that I've started using, but you can't create from there. You can't create from there unless you are superhuman, which most of us are not. Um, to be in that much pain and to be in that much despair because the doctors don't know what it is. I mean, that is very disparaging. Um, you really can't create from there. Um, 
I, I know someone else who was telling me the other day that she's just buried under debt, just buried under debt, and she needs more money. And I said, sounds like it's time for magic. Sounds like it's time for magic in your life. And she was like, oh, absolutely. And she turned around and walked away. When she came back, I said, there are organizations who help you. And I named one here in the Rogue Valley. There are organizations who help you recover your financial situation and get it back under control. And she said, oh, I don't need that. I just need more money. And I'm thinking, well, I need more money. You, you can't create from there you know, get the debt organized so that you're not thinking about that all the time. You think about debt all the time, you're going to get more debt. That's the way vibration and energy works. But she kind of missed my point, you know, when I said, you know, you can get this, you're making one payment to this organization, they take that payment and they disperse it out among your bills. So you don't have to think about it don't have to think about it. So we have this this illness with this pain and this just really um, disparaging situation. We have financial debt. Um, I know people that try and try and try to have healthy, loving relationships, and it just never seems to work out. So the question is, if you can't create from these places, then how do you create? And another phrase I've been hearing a, a lot is um, that it's okay to not be okay all the time. You know, sometimes in this three-dimensional life, it's like things happen to us. And we have to just sit with it for a while. We have to just uh, be present in that moment and experience the pain, experience the loss, experience the debt, whatever it is, and just be okay with not being okay for a moment. Now, the Abrahams talk about, uh, Abraham Hicks talks about, um, you know, stay in that place just long enough to figure out what you want and then try to get yourself out of that place. And that's a really good piece of advice if you are already moving up, if you are already moving up the emotional guidance scale. Um, that works. But where do you go when you're on the bottom, when you're in that dark, dark place and uh, you need to to get out of that place so that you can begin to create your life. Um, I had another friend who recently passed away. And one of the last things that she said to me was she was so ill. She said, I'm in a really dark place. I need to start changing up my thinking. And I need to help myself get well. She wanted to get well. And before she could get well, she passed away. Um, and and I'm not saying that, that that's what happens to us. I'm just you know, I think in her case, I think enough stress, you know, enough stress for any of us is going to be really, really bad for our health. Um, so sitting here with my friend yesterday talking about her illness and just how devastatingly awful this was. It, I mean, this was just so much pain and and. I could feel that she had been in that dark place. She did not know what to do. The doctors did not know what to do. And she wanted to feel better. And and at one point she told the doctors, look, I don't want pain meds. I want to get well. Because the pain meds aren't working. This was so horrible. The pain meds weren't even working. And so we started talking about the energy of this. You know, we know the stress that caused this energy, or the stress that the the energy of the stress that caused this situation. Um, but what do you do when you get there? And the only thing that I could really come up with was, and and this is hard because not everybody has a group of friends. 
she happens to have a group of friends. She could pull those friends in around her and ask uh, all I could do for her. I was sitting on the outside of all of this watching it happen. And all I could do for her was send energy, send energy, send energy. And we do that. We send energy for other people by holding that thought of them, loving thoughts in our hearts, thinking of them. And think I kept I kept going over in my mind all of the fun her and I have had over the last, you know, 27, 28 years. Um, and funny things that have happened and and you know, just good stuff. I was I was thinking about how much I loved her and um all of the stuff that we had done together. And that was where I stayed, was in that place with her. And I just held that place. That's all I could do. I was helpless. And I'm not a doctor. I have no medical training. So I was more helpless than the doctors were. So all I could do, most of the time she didn't feel like coming out. You know, she didn't want to be around people. And all I could do was sit and hold energy for her. And I think that one of the things that we have to do as human beings is we have to get over this feeling like I don't want to bother other people with whatever it is that I'm going through. Um, quantum physics talks about this thing called entanglement. And I knew the minute something started happening with her back in October, I could feel the energy. And the time was clicking and she didn't say anything to me. And and I was like, what is going on? What is going on? Finally, a month, month and a half later, I find out she's been in this horrible place with this awful pain. And, you know, I, I was like, well, you know, you didn't tell me, you didn't tell me this was happening to you. And I think what it boils down to for, for us human beings is that we don't want to bother each other. Even, even our friends, we don't want to bother each other. I think we need to get over that. I really think that we need to turn to our friends first thing and say, look, this weird thing is happening to me and I need you to send energy, send as much energy as you just, just bombard me with energy. Um, entanglement in quantum physics says that we have that power because us human beings, even in our dark places, are very, very powerful. And Sometimes what happens when we give a person a lot of energy is it unsticks the sequence of events that needs to happen in their life for them to get to the bottom of what it is that's going on with them. Um, other times, they just get well. The, what, that weird phantom pain that came in and caused so much hurt and so much disruption just goes away. So really, this is the only thing that I can think of. It's like when I talk to you guys about um, three-dimensional energy and how we mess it up and how things happen to us, it messes itself up in our lives. I always try to come up with um, with solutions, you know, with, okay, here's what it is and here's what you do do about it. But I think sometimes when we get to that really, really dark, disparaging place with illness or with um, money or with relationships that we have to kind of reach out to other people and ask for help, ask for energy. And um, we can do this for each other. And while your friends are all holding that place, for you of energy, you can start looking for a little brighter spot here and there. Um, it's it's difficult. I know. I know it is. Um, and my friend had said to me, I, I just was ready to move on. You know, I was ready to be done with this and move on with my life. 
that is such a positive thought. I want to get over this so I can move on, so I can move on into all of my beautiful creative projects that I want to do and living my life and, um, you know, working a, a job and, you know, having a three-dimensional existence. So that is really the only thing that I can come up with. I mean, if, if you're watching this video and you can say, well, we could do this for each other, that for each other, please write it in the comments below because this was very baffling. This was very baffling. And I mean, we know what it is. We know, we know it's the stress. We know that it's a chronic continuation of stress. And it brought my friend into this place of just sheer pain. We know all of that. We know that it was caused by energy. And I think what happens sometimes, you know, you hear about people getting these illnesses like cancer and stuff that, that does actually wind up making them pass away. Um, and, and, you know, at first I was wondering, it was like, well, why couldn't that person use their energy to heal themselves? And in certain circumstances, now I don't know about what happened recently, but in certain circumstances, I know that energy picks up momentum. This is why when you're working on something that you want to create in your life, at first, it feels kind of strange. It feels kind of new. And you keep thinking about that thing and you keep working on it and you keep thinking about it. And it kind of, the Abrahams say that when you do that, you fill in the grid. So when you have a new idea, when you have a new desire, you have basically this grid that's empty. And for me, I think of it like a puzzle. You know, here's this frame that this beautiful puzzle is going to fit into this frame. And I have all the pieces over here, but they're all jumbled up. So these are my, this is all the thoughts I have around this desire that I want to create in my life. And I have to find each puzzle piece and I have to fill that puzzle in until it becomes clear. And Sometimes I think we get into these illnesses and we we can't, you know, it's the stress has picked up so much momentum that that the puzzle frame or the grid is filled in with this this is what I am. I am sick. I have this illness or I have that illness. Um uh, another friend of mine uh, tells a story about a beloved friend of hers that she loved very much. And this person was very, very, very concerned with having uh, mammograms and having her breast checked, um, just really concerned about it. She was healthy and um, her life was seemed to be bumping along. Come to find out towards the end, there was a lot of stress in that life there was a lot of stress there and she died of breast cancer and that was the focus and i think that we need to focus on diminishing the stress as much as possible um for for my bestie it's kind of like the stress she's having right now she's kind of it, it's just kind of there and it is what it is you know how they say that it is what it is um, and so, in that case, if you're having stress that you can't eliminate, what we have to do at that point is we have to learn to manage the stress. I'll say it that way. And managing the stress lots of times has to do with um, not taking stuff personally. If you're living with somebody who is causing you stress, Get to a place where what they're saying to you doesn't matter. The stress they are causing you doesn't matter. Nine times out of ten, when somebody causes us stress, it's not about us. It's about them. 
so there, this, this is such a convoluted topic. There's so many bends and twists and turns that, you know, it's hard to pin it down, um, except to say that if you have a group of friends, if you have a posse that, that you can rely on, that you can turn to and be like, oh my gosh, this weird thing is happening to me and I need help. I need help. We need to learn to be able to say, I need help. And let those people charge up the energy for you. Let them hold those beautiful, amazing thoughts of you and support you in that energy while you're trying to get well, while your focus is on getting well. Um, other than that, it's it's so difficult. I'm not really sure um, how we can help each other. But I do know that just one of the things I had to get over was trying to fix everything. You know, I, if you give somebody your energy, you're not trying to fix it. One of the things, giving somebody your energy is the same as doing Reiki for them. Um, one of the things that I learned during my Reiki training was that Reiki is universal life force energy. In other words, it's source energy, it's creative energy. In other words, it's God. And we act at when we hold energy for another, when we create energy for another person, what we do is we clear out our own stuff. I like to tell people I'm a tube. I'm a tube. I'm an empty tube. And the energy comes into me and it flows out of me for the healing of the person who is laying on my table. The energy is going to do whatever needs to be done. And this was really hard for me to get my mind wrapped around because when people come to me and they want a Reiki session, I want to help them get well. I want to help them get well. I want that energy to flow through me and into them, and I want them to get well. In the spiritual world, that's what we call ego. Any time... And, you know, I mean, ego is this weird term. It's like we think of we think of this, you know, person throwing out their chest or, you know, they, they, they know more than anybody else and they can talk over the top of you and all this kind of stuff. We, we think of ego as like these very um, outward forms of putting a person first. But ego actually, in spiritual terms, you have the ego and you have your spirit. And the ego is the part of your psycho-spiritual makeup that wants to keep you safe. So if you're on an evolutionary path and you know another, another leveling up is fixing to happen, in evolution we call it level up. So you've been on this level for a while. You're ready for the next group of lessons that are going to help you level up. The universe takes care of all of that. But in this leveling up process, our ego is like, no, no, we want to stay here. It's nice here. It's comfy here. And we're safe here. We don't want to level up. We've already leveled up so much. That's your ego. Your spirit says, yeah, but we want to see what's on the next level. We want to see what that's like. You know, let's let's go and let's do it. Um, and so, you know, we have to watch the ego when it comes to healing because my ego just wants everybody to be well. I just want everybody to be well. And that's not always possible. When people get on my table, I have to turn loose of all of that desire for this person because this person has free will. And by wanting stuff for this person, wanting them to be well, 
I may be violating their free will. So, you know, but you can tell it it's different when a person is like, no, no, <laughs> I want to get well. I want to live. You know, I'm I'm otherwise happy except for this, you know, negative energy that I'm having right now from this stress. Um, and then that is what the spirit responds to. You know, a person's wanting to get well. I've known people who didn't want to get well. They wanted to die. And um, and and they do eventually. The people who want to die, they do die eventually. Um, but I think the spirit really knows your heart and knows what's going on inside of you and knows that you want to live, that you want to get well, you want to live. And my friend yesterday was just like, I was ready to move on. I'm ready to get over this, you know, whatever this is. And I'm ready to move on with my life, move on into my beautiful daydreams and create my wonderful life. So that is a place where having your friends bring you energy is going to be very productive. Um, I have done Reiki sessions for people and later they have passed away. And it it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that that they died, but that was what needed to happen according to the energy of the planet. That was what they needed. And in many times that is a relief and a release, but not for somebody who wants to live, not for somebody who wants, is ready to get well and move on in their life. Um, so I really think that when you are sick and when you are in pain and you want to get well and you want to move on, um, I think just Sort of being there, first of all, find out what stress brought you there. If you think about it, you can figure out what brought you there. My friend's specific pain, um, I was able to say, well, look how this happens in your life. And she was already clued in because she's extremely intelligent. She was already clued in to, yeah, no kidding, that stress was specific to the pain she was having in her body. And it's like, I think it's specific for all of us. I think if you look at your pain or your ailment, I mean, does your heart hurt all the time? Why does your heart hurt all the time? Oh, well, the doctor says I have heart disease. Okay, but why do you have heart disease? There's a three-dimensional explanation for heart disease. We know in, in medicine, in medical terms, we know what causes it. But in spiritual terms, what are we talking about here? You know, um, I have always had problems with my stomach. The stomach chakra, the solar plexus chakra, is where your courage lies. And so it has all, I've struggled with courage. I've struggled with saying, Here's who I am, or here's what I am, or here's what I want to do, and I'm going to fearlessly go forward in that. No, I, I don't go fearlessly forward into anything. I swallow hard, and I take the next step. And so so I've always had trouble with my, my, my stomach. Um, there are people who have trouble with their throat it, for no apparent reason. Except at one point in their life, usually in childhood, there was an issue with that person not being allowed to talk, not being allowed to express themselves. Um, and then they grow up and they're always having these chronic little issues with their throat. So I think it's important to kind of try to get to the bottom of what it is that brought you there, the stress that brought you there in the first place. And you're not going to not go to the doctor, okay? I never, ever would tell somebody not to go to the doctor because one of the things that energy does is it picks up that momentum until pretty soon the psycho-spiritual issue 
that brought you to this illness has picked up so much momentum, now it's a medical issue. And you have to go to the doctor and you have to be treated for it. Um, so if we can stop it before it gets to that point uh, by eliminating the stress or buffering the stress as much as we can, um, by being aware of the fact that this stress is affecting me this way and I need to put up my shields or uh, end that situation. If you can end the situation, so many stressful situations cannot be ended right away. They have to be they have to be there in your life, but try to buffer that. Try to try to use your use your shields, put up a light shield, um, turn your ears off. So they only hear the good stuff um, and try to not be around that situation as much as you can. So that's one of the things that we can do to keep this from picking up whatever it is, keep it from picking up momentum and having it turn into, at that point, having it turn into a medical issue. Um, I think just being aware of it and... Uh, doing doing uh spiritual practices around it meditate every day this helps dissolve stress um and i think it's really important up in the middle of a stressful situation that you cannot take out of your life i think it's really important to be in a very high vibrational state of self-love because many times in many situations, especially with family members, we're being, um, how would you say it, we're being uh, tore down. You know, they tear us down. Family, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, sometimes, you know, they're the worst and they tear us down and they pick out our faults and they, you know, they don't encourage us. And you just have to do that for yourself. So that's really kind of all I have to say on the subject because it's just such a, a difficult subject. And um, I think being aware of the fact that if you're experiencing some sort of chronic stress and then all of a sudden, suddenly, and most painfully, you're experiencing a physical stress, that um, that can actually lead to something. And we have power over that. But I think lots of times the power that we experience needs to happen before it turns into a medical condition. So the website is a magical life with And um, look at uh, the very first little block there on the front page is Magical Life Publications. And so um, I'm gearing up, getting ready to go in that direction. Um, the books that are on there are being written as we're speaking and getting ready to go onto the market. Julia's song will be uh, dropping on um, probably June the 30th. And... Uh, Sacred Song and Sacred Earth will be back on the market. Will be uh, the second edition will be uh, March 30th, March 1st, March 1st. They will be back on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So you can watch for that. And that's really all I have to say on the subject. So I would just like to wish you a wonderful day. I love you. And I will see you next week.